Before the likes of Lori Harvey and Angela Simmons, there was an it girl in the 90s named Kadada Jones. A young woman is typically considered an it girl if they're conventionally attractive, has great sense of fashion, they're close friends with other Hollywood socialites, and in a lot of cases come from wealthy or famous parents. And Kadada happens to check off every box. I feel like people often see her in throwback pics or heard about her relationship with Tupac, but do you actually know who Kadada Jones is? From her relationships with legendary rappers to her friendships with young Hollywood celebs, this is the untold truth about Kadada Jones. Kadada Ann Jones was born on March 22, 1974 in Los Angeles, California. She is the daughter of legendary black record producer Quincy Jones and white actress Peggy Lipton, and also the older sister of actress Rashida Jones. The girls grew up in the wealthy Bel Air neighborhood of Los Angeles, and in school, Kadada faced racism from her white classmates for being biracial. Meanwhile, life for her younger sister Rashida was easier because she was white passing and not many questioned her racial identity. Peggy's parents were upset that she married and had kids with a black man. They were closer to Rashida since she looked more white. But Kadada says she felt as though her grandparents never really approved of her because she had a little more black genes than Rashida did. In a Glamour magazine interview, Rashida said, I had no control over how I looked. This is my natural hair. These are my natural eyes. I've never tried to be anything that I'm not. Today I feel guilty knowing that because of the way our genes tumbled out, Kadada had to go through pain I didn't have to endure. Loving her so much, I'm sad that I'll never share that experience with her. Kadada had learning disabilities and was held back twice and expelled from 10 schools for behavioral issues. Peggy finally enrolled her in a school with more black students at her request. In her teens, Kadada and Rashida were featured in Sassy magazine. She may not have been a scholar, but Kadada found her calling with style and fashion. After high school, she enrolled in the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. Outside of school, she worked as a wardrobe stylist for Vibe magazine, a lifestyle, music, and entertainment magazine founded by her father, Quincy Jones, and producer David Salzman. Designer Tommy Hilfiger was impressed by a cover Kadada styled and invited her to work for his brand. Kadada ended up quitting school a short time after at the age of 19 to work in the publicity department at Tommy Hilfiger. There, she became close friends to Andy Hilfiger, Tommy's younger brother. The preppy brand was looking to target a more younger urban market after rappers started wearing and promoting the brand. Together, Kadada and Andy pitched Tommy the concept of a streetwear line, and Tommy Jeans was the result. Around this time, in 1992, she started dating rapper LL Cool J. LL and his longtime girlfriend Simone were on a break, and they had just welcomed a second baby. She said she got my number from Russell Simmons and had been trying to hook up with me for weeks. She kept calling me, like every other day. And finally, we decided to go out on a date. He and Kadada dated for two years before he broke up with her, citing her spiritual beliefs and practices as the cause. In his memoir titled, I Make My Own Rules, LL Cool J said, she would go to an ashram, consult a guru, and pray to statues. Before my album 14 Shots to the Dome dropped, Kadada told me she threw some kind of stick into the eternal fire for my album. I was like, yo, why would you do that? I didn't ask you to do that. That joint flopped crazily. Oh well, I'm sorry I cared, she said. I had hurt her feelings, but she had hurt me too. I know she meant well, but I just couldn't get with that. She took me to her guru once, and I remember kneeling before this strange young woman who was touching feathers, end quote. A year after the breakup, he ended up marrying his longtime girlfriend, Simone. By the mid-90s, Kadada was wearing many hats at the brand, like styling and talent scouting. She was also chosen to be the face of the Tommy Hilfiger brand and appeared in quite a few campaigns. She helped transform the brand by recruiting popular black figures in music like TLC, Usher, Mary J. Blige, Snoop Dogg, Aaliyah, Destiny's Child, and Michael Jackson. Michael 
Michael Jackson's Neverland. It was amazing. There I was meeting the king of pop. Oh, thank you so much. Also there taking in this magical experience were actress Nastasha Kinski, Michael's longtime friend and producer Quincy Jones, and Quincy's daughter Kadada. Yeah. Yeah. Nearly every magazine wants Michael on its cover. But Quincy says it took his daughter Kadada, who's known Michael since she was a kid, to make the deal happen. He told me up there that he said, uh, I trust your daughter, whatever she recommends, so I'll, I'll try it. You know, he's got nice broad shoulders, he he's got stand. a nice height, he's got a nice yeah. figure, so clothes look good on yeah. him. Though she posed with Michael for a couple of shots, Kadada was really there to style a shoot. She's the one who got Michael to wear hip-hop looks by Tommy Hilfiger, Diesel, Adidas, and Carl Kanai. A radical departure for an artist known for creating his own style. Kadada, was it a struggle to get him into any of these clothes? Nope. Was he, he was he was more than happy to put all of it on. He was. Really? Yep. So there wasn't anything that you brought where he said, mm -mm, I'm not wearing that color or no. whatever? No, he was, he was totally trusting. He put it in my hands. He trusts me. <laughs> and the proof of that is in the pictures. And the magazine is already getting letters from readers who love his new look. But what about Michael? Have you heard what he thinks of this? Have either of you heard? He no. loves it, yeah. He does oh, love it. Yeah. Do you like the cover? Oh, yeah. Going to Neverland was the trip of a lifetime, but I knew photographic evidence would be needed if anyone was going to believe I was really there. So Michael was kind enough to pose for a final yeah, group shot. Like Meanwhile, a romance with Kadada and another hip hop icon was brewing. Sometime in 1995, she met rapper Tupac at a club before one of his sexual assault trials. Two years prior, in a Source Magazine interview, Tupac criticized her father, Quincy Jones, for his relationships with white women and making f***ed up kids, quote unquote. Kadada never responded publicly, but her sister Rashida responded to his interview in a letter published in Source magazine saying, I cannot view this article or this man without bias, but I do think that anyone who reads this article would be shocked by his ignorance and lack of respect for his people. To demean a man like Quincy Jones, a man who came from the ghetto of Chicago and through his talent and perseverance became a living music legend, demeans the whole progress of African Americans. This artist and his music are in no way, as the article puts it, responsible. He is purely self-absorbed and indulgent. Where the hell would you be if black people like him hadn't paved the way for you to even have the opportunity to express yourself? I don't see you fighting for your race. In my opinion, you're destroying it and all over people." End quote. The second time he and Kadada met, he apologized. They exchanged numbers and began dating, despite him being married to his first wife, Keisha Morris Shakur, who he had just married that year in April. After their marriage was annulled, Tupac proposed to Kadada. It wasn't long before he introduced her to his mother, Afeni, saying, I love her. She's going to be my wife. She's going to have my children. Quincy wasn't happy about their relationship and confronted Tupac at a restaurant about his comments, but they were able to settle their differences and the two became close friends. In 1996, the couple began living together in Calabasas and stayed together until his death a few months later. Kadada was with Tupac in Las Vegas to celebrate his business partner Tracy Daniel Robinson's birthday and to attend the Bruce Seldon vs. Mike Tyson boxing match at the MGM Grand Hotel, but was back at the hotel when he was shot. She was one of the last people to speak to him before he slipped into a coma and eventually passed away. Three days later, she had his face tattooed on her arm. In her father's autobiography, she wrote, Tupac was the love of my life. He and I lived together for four months and then he was murdered in Las Vegas in 1996. It was the most horrible thing that ever happened to me. I knew we should have never gone to Vegas that night. I had a horrible feeling about it. I've gone over it in my mind a million times. It wasn't supposed to happen. We weren't supposed to be there. It was the worst possible thing that could have happened. I still to this day don't know who shot him. I wasn't able to say goodbye. It's not something that should happen to anyone." End quote. Kadada says she was depressed and numb for nine months after Tupac's death. She said, For a while afterward, I didn't want to be alive. I was on my back, literally on my back for months. My father underestimated how that affected me and shaped and molded me as a human being. He came around. Eventually, he realized how it affected me, though I had to really show him." End quote. I was at a club one night in New York and he thought I was Rashida, Tupac did, and he came up to me and he was apologizing about the article that he wrote about my parents. And you know, and so I'm just like, oh my God, he is so cute. 
Kadadra and Tupac soon grow close, much to her dad's dismay. I remember one night he was like, you know, you can date whoever you want, but you will not bring Tupac to my house. That's one rapper you will not be dating. One night, while Kadadra and Tupac were at a restaurant, Quincy walked in the door. Tupac said, I have a few things to talk to you about. And my dad was like, I have a few things to talk to you about, too. He apologized. And, and when he was apologizing, two white girls from San Francisco said, hey, Tupac, remember us? <laughs> You know, I said, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. When I heard that he got shot, and I called my mom to tell her. She got on a plane from New York immediately. I called my dad. I told him what was going on. He didn't think he was going to die. He was just like, can't come, you know. Love, I love is with you. Can't come. For eight or nine months, I tell you, I could not get a word out. I couldn't leave my house and then I harbored a lot of anger towards my dad because he wasn't there when he really deals with stuff personally I think the pain is too much for him he can't deal with it at the moment uh, but, but later on he does when I came home we'd all talk and cry and look at pictures and stuff so in his own way of dealing with pain he was a hundred percent there but it wouldn't be long before she found comfort in a new relationship Kadada continued working as a stylist and talent scout for Tommy Hilfiger. She is partially responsible for transforming the label into a young, hip, and trendy fashion brand. She recruited a lot of her young Hollywood friends to model for the brand like Ivanka Trump and Kate Hudson. One, two, here it is! Tommy Hilfiger! The world of Tommy Hilfiger! Tommy G's! What? What? We bring it to you live! Direct! Aaliyah on stage! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! While styling a Tommy Hilfiger fashion show, Kadada met rising R&B superstar Aaliyah, and they hit it off right away. She said, you know when the dogs are at the dog park and they run up to each other and their tails wag and they smell each other? It was just easy. As soon as we met, we just started talking and that was it. We were like four or five years apart. We were into fashion, music, boys, pop culture, sense of humor. That's what I would say was our common ground. We used to do prank call after prank call. Her mom allowed me to be her guardian for a little bit. I was a few years older, so when she went to Europe, I was the guardian, which was a complete and total nightmare. I'll keep it mild, but it was just young, fun, and maybe I didn't really understand the boundaries. We got in trouble quite a few times, but she was the funniest friend. A lot of friends have quarrels, and maybe we had a couple disagreements, but our friendship was based on going out and having a great time. We ate breakfast late at night, we got our nails done a lot, we shopped a lot. When no one even knew what Kitson was, we would be there all the time. We spent a lot of time getting matching outfits and clothes. We had boyfriends at the same time, so we would get them the same presents. We even vacationed together. We went to Fiji. We did a lot of making up dances. Every time we got to a dance in place, we'd end up doing the house party dance, right in the middle of the party. I mean, we didn't even care. People just thought we were stupid. Meanwhile, Kadada was taken modeling more seriously and was also expanding her resume to acting, appearing in the films The Faculty, Black and White with Brooke Shields, and Thicker Than Water, among others. Kadada Jones and Leonardo DiCaprio were also rumored to have a brief romance in 1999, but those reports have never been confirmed. She remained close friends to Aaliyah until her untimely death in 2001. Her mother Peggy said, I loved watching Kadada and Aaliyah together. They were going to be lifelong best friends. They wanted to get married in a double wedding, have their kids together, end quote. Rashida also said, When I heard about Aaliyah's death, I dropped everything and went straight to LA. Kadada collapsed in my arms. She said, Now you're going to have to step in and be my little sister. Being together during Kadada's most vulnerable time made us realize we were irreplaceable to each other. End quote. We were in the process of starting a girl's clothing line. It was called Dolly Pop. Right when she passed, we were getting ready to sign our contracts for that. We were making plans for this brand that was going to be girly and cute and have Japanese inspiration. This was seven or eight years ago, so the whole Japanese inspiration wasn't at the forefront. Her instinct was definitely forward and a little brave. Two years later, she married Jeffrey Nash, but filed for divorce a few years later. 
In 2005, Kadada brought her talents to the Walt Disney Company, where she was a designer. Over the years, her job expanded to include consulting on existing Disney projects and designing Kadada for Disney Couture, a line of clothing and jewelry for adults sold at boutiques. Since her It Girl days in the 90s, Kadada Jones has slowly moved away from the public eye. In 2017, she published a book titled School of Awake, a girl's guide to the universe. The book offers advice for young girls and practices they should consider to get in touch with their spiritual side. What former it girl should I cover next? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.